The Separatist Alliance used legions of battle droids in order to fight their campaign against the Republic to considerable effect, but what would have happened if the droid army didn't exist, and the Separatists were forced to fight the war with their own people? So, for this theory, we're going to be saying that the droid army was not built in time for the beginning of the Clone Wars. We'll say that there are still some small droid armies that previously belonged to the conglomerates of the Separatist Council, such as the Trade Federation's army. However, they have nowhere near the amount that we see in our timeline, nor the facilities to make them. However, we are going to be saying that the clone army does still exist. So, what does this mean? Well, firstly, it means that the Separatists are going to be put at a fraction of the power that they held in our timeline. Instead, we're going to be looking at a faction similar to how it was in the early stages before the Clone Wars, in the initial Separatist crisis, with small alien factions fighting for independence. Now, the Separatists themselves would be far more fractured. Without the resources from the ruling council, they would be less inclined to work together. They'd also be far less inclined to serve Dooku without the support of these resources, meaning that Sidious wouldn't really be able to manipulate the Separatists at all. The only way he was able to do this in the Clone Wars is because he controlled the council, the council controlled the resources, and therefore controlled the war effort. However, in this timeline, since the actual individual worlds and systems control the manpower, they therefore control the war effort, and therefore they're not inclined to do whatever they're told. Now, this would lead to the Separatists being far more democratic, as they all basically hold equal amounts of power, but they'd still be far more fractured. Another key factor, and probably the main one, is how the war would actually be fought. Without the mass amounts of droids, it means that their ability to launch offensive campaigns into the mid and inner rim is almost completely impossible. Remember, these soldiers were fighting for independence of their homeworlds and systems. I find it very unlikely that many of them would be willing to send their own people to foreign lands to die. Most members of the Separatists weren't interested in invading other worlds, they simply wanted independence for their own. As well as this, getting different worlds to work together would also be very difficult. As I said, they'd be fractured, and would be far less inclined to work alongside and help one another. For this reason, the Separatists' entire war effort is going to be defensive-based. We'll say that they're still going to get resources such as tanks, weapons and supplies from the Council. However, from here, they're on their own, and the Republic would be quickly on their way to retake these worlds. Since the Separatists are now significantly lacking expendable manpower, their ability to defend their own worlds is also going to be difficult, especially considering they're going up against clones, an elite army designed just for this. Also, Republic troops are better trained, they have plenty more resources, and they're going to be a nightmare to fight. So, how's the war going to go? Well, the Separatist worlds would be forced to fight a guerrilla war. They'd likely have to abandon large cities and key resources such as factories and shipyards to the Republic and flee to the wilds of their worlds. From here, they'd just have to strike out, cause the Republic damage and then disappear again in a series of hit and run attacks. Realistically, fighting them face to face is doomed to fail. Just think about how the war in Vietnam was fought, but in Star Wars. Realistically, their objective is to cause the Republic that much distress, robbing them of troops and resources, and this essentially means that keeping the world is not worth the amount that they're losing by holding it. It's somewhat of the idea that eventually the Republic will just give up. Which is possibly more likely considering pro-war efforts in the Republic would be significantly lacking without the Separatists invading them, or without the threat of the droid army. Now, although this is possible, realistically, this entire Separatist movement would be doomed to fail. The Tycoons, although wanting to benefit from having a galaxy rid of the Republic, really wouldn't have a power base of their own. What they're doing is simply funding a series of proxy wars across the galaxy. For this reason, I find it quite unlikely that a lot of the Tycoons and other members of the Separatist Council would ever actually officially align themselves with the Separatists. They'd probably remain neutral, continue doing business with the Republic, and then secretly fund these proxy wars. Not only this, but Separatist space just wouldn't exist. They don't have enough manpower to be able to patrol and hold that amount of space, so they're not going to be able to stop the Republic from invading. So, although certain worlds may be held by Separatists, realistically all of space is still going to be held by the Republic and their massive fleet. 
All the Republic would really have to do was put in a few blockades and maybe put in some very, very strict regulations for dealing with these Separatists, and I think that a lot of the Tycoons would quickly lose interests and stop funding them. From there, the Republic just has to rein them in, and without the buffer zone of Separatist space, that's going to be very easy. But what do you think would happen if the Separatist destroyed army never existed, and is there any way the CIS would still be able to win? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, please remember to like, share and sub if you enjoyed as it's really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell for regular updates. Thanks again for watching, I really do hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.